Hello guys and welcome to a new video as promised today's video is a comeback to my old style montages but with extra new edits that I hope you guys enjoyed and also a comeback to the old how to solo vs squad series and again with an extra addition as I'll be sharing clips where I actually lost the fight since many of you guys requested that and I'll explain how I lost them and what I could have done better to win let's get started Let's start with the first encounter in farm. I noticed that the boss went down from the kill feed so I decided to go there for extra kills. And knowing that this squad survived the farm and must have good loot from killing the butcher, I took it easy. And I started observing the area to choose the best approach to this fight. So we have one player here and another two there and then the final player was under the tower. So usually when I fight squads in boss area I like to engage from this building right here but this time it was too risky because I would have been sandwiched from two sides and I would have been highly exposed to this player since he has higher ground than me. So I decided to land on the second house which is pretty much the same but since it's further it will give me more time to split the enemy team apart. The first enemy decided to bail which I think was a smart decision by him because he was in the open alone while I had cover and high ground. Then the rest of his team used an airborne to rush me and since they used it at the same time I decided to avoid this fight. Because as I mentioned they must be on max health and max vests and my chances of surviving would have been extremely low. So the best decision here was to head inside the church and this way I managed to block their vision. I waited a little bit until they land then I gained some high ground and I was ready to fight. And as you can see I successfully managed to split the enemy team apart to take them down one by one. This player snowboards inside the house is no longer a threat so I ignored him for now and focused on his teammates and as a result I was able to spot the, the enemy landing from the air. Honestly I have no idea why he jumped down, he had a perfect high ground position on top of the church and he could have killed me easily from that spot. This helicopter guy was so annoying, he was from another squad and he was distracting me a lot. Like you either fight or leave the area but he just stood there. So to be safe I retreated back to the church, I scared him away and now I can focus on the last enemy. My aim was trash here, the enemy used snowboard to get away so I checked the map to see where he's heading and as you can see he stopped near this building so I took high ground and finished him off. The second fight was a loss so I'm gonna play it normally first then I'll tell you guys the reasons for my death in this fight. So first of all the fact that I was fighting a full squad in an open area with no cover at all knowing that I have ninja class which is bad in these situations. Second mistake was awareness related because right here I should have been able to spot the second enemy but I didn't and as a result I wasn't ready for him and he caught me off guard while I was trying to reload. And yes I know I still knocked him down and his other teammate but he managed to leave me with 24 health making it easy for his teammate to finish me off. Second of all I had a chance to change my position and heal right here but instead I was greedy and went for the kill. 
And even with the snowboard, I could have made it harder for him to hit me by jumping or moving in zigzag motion. But to be fair, I did not expect him to hit me. Moving on to the third fight, which I won, I noticed that the airdrop was just loaded, so I went in for more kills. And even though I won this fight, I did a mistake, which is not observing the area well. I just spotted this enemy and went in, thinking that he's alone, and literally two seconds after I made my decision, his teammate comes out, he was hiding behind the airdrop, and his second teammate, I believe, came from the platform, and there was another one which I didn't even see. I'm not sure where he was, but all of a sudden, I was in a 1v4 situation instead of a 1v1. But it's okay, because I had a huge advantage advantage over them with this building. It provided both cover and high ground. The only thing that I needed to worry about was a ninja user because he's the only one that can get to me right now. And guess what, the moment that I thought of that the ninja decided to rush me and thankfully since I wasn't shooting I was able to hear him using his hook to get to the roof and I was able to react fast and take him down. Hey. Here a bot shows out of nowhere. So I was about to kill him, it was an instant reaction from my brain, but as soon as I realized that he's a bot, I stopped shooting and instead I used him as a distraction which gave me an extra easy knock on the second enemy. And finally, since I know that I killed both the defender user and the trap master user, it was safe for me to rush the last enemy. Moving on to the second mistake in this video which was honestly a dumb mistake. So I was up against a really strong squad in this game, they were getting a lot of kills. So I know I had to be careful here and play it smartly. As I mentioned before, strong squads are mostly thirsty for blood and overconfident, so I used that to my advantage. To be exact, the plan was to get them to use this zip line to get easy knocks on them. So I fired some shots, not necessarily to kill them, but mainly to bait them into using the zip line. Here two players were pushing at the same time and on top of that the last player was covering them with a sniper so I had to switch my position. Here I moved to the right side of the rock and as a result the enemy was fully exposed while I had most of my body covered. I had to bail and heal up and sadly during that the enemy was able to revive his teammate but he still needed to heal up so I decided to go in again and by that time he already has his shield up. In case you don't know the defender class has one of the lowest cooldowns if not the lowest. So I had to bail again because I was low and his teammate was ready to fight. These guys were able to scan the dog tags and revive their teammates back, but I was one step ahead. I kept an eye on the revive timer and as you can see an extra player was revived. I was expecting two players but apparently they didn't scan the second tag on time. The next step was to predict where the player will land. Usually they land where they died to get back their loot, but in this case the area was already outside the zone. So his next option was the airdrop, especially that there was a new one coming, so it was a perfect landing spot for him, and that's exactly where I headed next.
Again, I kept an eye on the revive timer and as you can see another player was revived. At this point, I wasn't sure if it was a player from the same squad or another one. But I heard his shots and I saw his name and I pushed him right away before he gets any loot. Two down and two to go. This time they can't revive their teammate because the last revive flight already taken off. We met again near the end and this is where I made the dump mistake. So I knocked one and only one left, right? And even though I knew they had Trapmaster user, I still decided to rush. Finish. Yeah. And as a result, I died to his traps. To be fair, I rushed because I didn't see any traps there, but this guy was extremely lucky with his trap timing and it hit me twice. But anyway, I should have used my ninja hook to get on top of this rock and kill them from there. It would have been an easy finish off. Finally, another fight in farm. This time it was early in the game and again, these guys were moving together. So I had to bait them to come to me and this time I didn't have zipline. But I do have this building right here and I can use it to gain an advantage over them. I knocked the first one, then two of his teammates used an airborne. Remember last time I decided to bail because the enemies used it at the same time and they had good loot. Well this time it's different, we're at the start of the game so the chances of them having vests and 150 health is lower. And also there was around 3 seconds gap between them which means they can't rush me at once and I'll have more than enough time to kill them one by one. In here once I realized that I still have good amount of health I used the surprise mother technique which is basically doing the unexpected. Now the enemy thinks that I'm low and running away from him so I surprised him and caught him off guard trying to climb from the window which made him vulnerable for split seconds and gave me a head start over him and with the help of the AK-117 and its insane hip fire and fast fire rate I took him down easily. And I don't know where this guy came from but he got clapped too. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you found the tips useful. I don't want to sound like I'm complaining but this video took a very long time and effort to make. So a like would be highly appreciated and if you're not subscribed then kindly consider it for more awesome videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.